Hey, hey, hey everyone, how's it going? It's Lance Cardinal here with Indigenous Art Adventures. Uh, I'm so happy to be here once again on this beautiful day the Creator has made for us to, to show you guys a bonus video that you can do this summer after school is done and you have all that free time and you and your family are spending it outside. Here's a really, really fun thing you can do together as a family uh, this summer, okay? So we are gonna do um, something really, really cool that you can do when you're outside, and that's what today's art project is all about. And that is painted feathers! That's right, yes, we're gonna do something really, really cool called painted feathers, which is easy and beautiful, and you can display it in your home or give it away as a gift. So much fun. So let's start. First, we need some supplies. Of course, we need feathers. Now, you can go for a walk with your family to the bush, and uh, you can find feathers everywhere. Uh, eagle feathers, uh, crow feathers, anything you can find on the ground, you can pick up, um, but you know, be sure not to take it off of animals or uh, go looking in nests. Only if it's on the ground should you take feathers. Uh, and even then, if you do take feathers from the ground for something, please leave a little bit of tobacco as an offering to the earth and to thank them for providing you with something like that. But if not, go to the dollar store and you can find some really cool feathers there. But try and get the feathers, you, you, if you can, that are flat. They have um, sort of a flat surface to paint on. It's much easier to work with that way. So find those kind. And whatever color you want, doesn't matter. The paint will paint on any color. So we have our feathers. Perfect. I got three picked out right here. We're going to do three feathers today. Or you can do one, as many as you want. Doesn't matter. We also need some craft paint. So I have lots of paint here that we can choose from. Lots of different colors. You can see here, I have a whole bucket of colors. And these are very cheap at the dollar store. They're only about a, a buck a piece and you can use them like that okay now you need some paint brushes as well which I have a lot of here but don't forget you also need um, something to put the paint in now if you can find these at the dollar store or at your house little containers these are great for paint little bits of paint in there you can throw it away after it's done or you can put a cover on it if you want to save it um, otherwise you can also use um, one of these container lids uh, as a palette you can put your pieces of, of or bobs of color on there now, don't forget you also need um, water, which I have a bucket of water here and some paper towel because every time you rinse your brush, you want to dry it off for the next color, okay? And paper towel is just for that. And painting clothes, make sure and wear clothes you don't want to, you don't worry about getting dirty because these paints will stain your clothes forever. So be sure if you are using these kind of acrylic paints that if you get some on yourself, you wash it off right away, okay? That's really, really cool. And also you're going to need um, a foam core base like this piece of foam. Uh, it's like a... a Paper filled foam you can buy anywhere, but you can use anything you want. Styrofoam, you can also use um, plasticine, whatever you want to make these feathers stand up in a little display. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do today. All right, well, let's begin. Now, I see back here I have a whole bunch of samples of different feathers that I have created, and also people I have worked with have created uh, in another feather painting session. Aren't these beautiful? So we can do things like this patterns and feathers dots, circles, lines, whatever you want. We're gonna try a few of these uh, techniques here today, okay? First thing I'm gonna do is is uh, put uh, get my base kind of prepped. Um, you wanna put a little bit of a hole in your holder with a pen, which is the best. So we got one hole, two holes, and three holes. And that's where we're gonna put our feathers. Let's practice and see if they fit. Yes, one and two and three. Now remember, there is a, a flatter side to a feather, okay? There's a side that's sort of bumpy. You can see the difference here. Bumpy side, flat side. And the curve is always this way on the, on the flat side. They wanna paint on that side, okay? So, I mean, again, you, whatever you need to do for yourself to make it easier, go ahead and do it. I like doing this ahead of time. And as a matter of fact, I like to use a glue gun and glue the pieces, the feathers, right inside the base while I work so that it stays in one place and I can just use the base to move the feathers around, turn them, everything like that. Now don't forget, you can keep these in here forever as a little display and give it to your mom or Kokomo or whoever and they'd love to have this on their desk or on their bookshelf with your actual artwork on it. So cool. But let's try some stuff out. So let's get our paintbrushes ready. I have a little brush here. Um, I like to use a small one at first to sort of figure out what I'm gonna do. So let's get some nice bright colors here. How about some blue, okay? Baby blue, looks pretty cool. Let's squirt some into my little bucket there, perfect. I'm also gonna get some yellow, which I love. Yellow is such a fun color and so nice and bright for these kind of projects. 
don't need much. That's that's lots. Only a dime size, okay? Because you can, you don't want to put too much in waste. Now I want to pick a few more fun colors so we can have them on hand. How about this one? Kind of a purpley pink. Put that down here. Ooh, look at this one, lime green. That's fun. Let's do that one. That would look really cool on the black feather. Hey, okay? always good to shake these up before you open them up. They always get all settled in. You want to make sure all the product inside is mixed correctly. Perfect. What else can we try? Hmm. Oh, purple. Purple's always good. And it's always bright and fun. Let's try that. Purple here. And last but not least, let's check out some red. This one here is a deep red. Oh yeah, I love that. Nice and dark. Perfect. Perfect. All right, we have all of our colors picked out. You see there and there. Good to go. Let's begin. Now, if you have a plan, that's great. But sometimes it's better not to have a plan at all. I like to improvise when I paint. So today we're going to do that. So I'm going to try and help you uh, see better how I do it. I'm a left-handed painter, though. I'm going to start with some lines. Now, darker colors look better on lighter feathers, and lighter colors look better on darker feathers. So I'm going to take some of this green. I'm going to try it on the black and see how it holds. Whoa, so cool. There we go. So there you can see, um, not that difficult to do, but it is a little bit time consuming. So you have to have patience and love for the craft and use your imagination. So we're gonna plow through this um, display here, samples. I'm gonna put a little bit of paper towel underneath my project so I don't get my desk dirty. And I think you should do the same thing at your house. Put down paper or whatever you can do to make the house clean because mom and dad do not want to clean up after you after a long day of working. But if you're all working as a team, then maybe you should all clean up together. <laughs> now, I love patterns. I love geometric patterns. I always do them in my art. Okay. There's some lime green on my black and it looks pretty, pretty cool. So I'm gonna um, rinse that off. So when I rinse my brushes, I like to rinse in warm water till it's empty and then rub it on the paper towel. If there's color on the paper towel, it's not clean enough yet. Put it back in the water and rinse it again. And rub it on the paper towel till it's dry. Ah, good. Now, you don't want this to be wet because if you if you wet it, it'll get too watery and it'll make the paint smear. You don't want that, right? Okay, so let's go to our red, our red feather here. I wish I had some dark colors. I'm gonna get some navy blue so I can have a nice dark color as well. Painted fingers. I'm gonna do some dots today on my white feather. Dot, 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 we're making a project. <laughs> Dots are easy to do, lots of fun. And also, there's no rhyme nor reason to them. You don't have to have it perfect. It doesn't have to be anything specific. It can be dots and speckles, right? Check it out. So, so cool. I love it already. Love it already. It looks so good. Rinse my brush. Pick a new color. How about pink? Let's put some more pink on this white feather. How though? Maybe right at the center. I'm going to do one big pink stripe. Now if the pink colors mix, don't sweat it. Like I said, it's meant to be. It's meant to be. You gotta let the, the art actually take care of itself sometimes. Sometimes you have to work with the feathers or whatever you're doing and let the, let the art speak for itself. If it wants to do that, it's gonna do it and let it do it. Don't be scared for things to be, to be surprising. Don't be scared for mistakes and don't be scared to try something different because sometimes that's the best, the best results. I'm gonna take some of this dark, dark red, put it on this black feather because that's gonna look so sharp. And this is gonna be our striped feather. You can tell right now. It's going to be awesome. Now, sometimes if you want to go in between colors and dry with a hair dryer, it can help to not have them blend together. I don't mind the blending. I think it's cool. So that was our red. So we put red on our black feather just like that. And our polka dot with the pink looks super fun. This is kind of cute. It's kind of like a little 1980s feather. <laughs> All right. So next we have the red feathers look a little dull. 
Let's give her some baby blue. I've never done a baby blue feather before. Let's try that. And do the whole top blue. And again, don't be scared about color. Don't be scared about putting things down however you want. And you can see there, not very bright. So you want to do a couple coats of that color. But that's easy to do. Like I said, let it dry, work on something else. So meanwhile, while that's doing that, I'm going to get my dark blue and add some more lines to this red feather. What about, hmm, large circles? Now, if you have ideas to do like stars and a moon and the, and the sun, that's also cool too. But like I said, there's no right, there's no wrong. Just fun. All right, I got light blue. I'm going to do some light blue around the dark blue circles. And now that this top part's dried a bit, I'm going to add more blue. Oh, I, I really like how that turned out. See the surprises that can happen? That was a total surprise. I did not expect that to turn out that way, and it looks awesome. All right, we go back to our black feather, and we're going to add, hmm, what about some pink to the black? Right on top. Pink circle, pink. Rinse that brush off. What haven't we used yet? Oh, yellow. Yellow looks good on red, right? So let's do that. Let's do, I don't know, stripes. Just like that. So again, it's super, super easy to do. Lots of fun. Make sure you keep your brushes nice and rinsed. But yeah, that is a totally fun and easy project for you and your family to do um, and you know don't be scared to try something different go for a walk find some feathers you love and do some art thank you so much for joining me today guys hope your feathers are amazing i'm sure they will be have a great summer and once again may the creator watch over you as long as the sun shines the grass grows and the river flows see you later